All right, did you enjoy the musical? We certainly have. It was so heart touching. It, it was, and, and very uplifting, don't you think? Definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, at this uh, joyous occasion, it is our immense privilege to invite our very special guest of honor, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Let's now meet the real Tom. Hello, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Supreme Master Ching Hai, we wish you were here in person. We reserved a seat just for you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Please, thank all involved for me, please, one more time. Thank you so much, thank you so much. We've watched an extraordinary musical, The Real Love, which was inspired by your poetry and just a part of your amazing personal journey. And for that, we want to thank you. We all loved it. We really did. Supreme Master Ching Hai, would you care to give us your thoughts on the musical? Wow. You make our world more beautiful with the music. Uh, I, I've been watching it. I've been hiding to watch it because I didn't want to impose my presence on this beautiful occasion until it's all done. Wow, it's like a miracle. Uh, all these uh, great names, great musicians, great composer, director come together to create such a magnificent masterpiece. They are all so kind, so elegant. Wow. If it's not for having to meditate now a long hour, I would trade anything to come to see this. I would trade anything. But I had to stay here in order to continue meditation unbroken. A few hours, okay, but not like two, three days. Thank you so much again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's breathtaking. Breathtaking. I'm sure the audience feels exactly the same as I do. Wow. <sighs> My greeting, hugging, <laughs> embracing <laughs> to the great composers like Mr. Akasha, Mr. Doug Casaro, Mr. Don Pipping, Mr. David Shire, we met again, <laughs> and Mr. Bill County, who could not be here today, but I feel his love. He always has the talent of sending love, <laughs> even when he is not present. Thanks for your musical scores that really set our spirits soaring high and touch our hearts to the core. You really glorify love tonight. I appreciate all the kind words you have shared about my poems as well, personally and in the press. And I'm so honored that you wanted to bring to them the uplifting elements of song on this as on other occasions. And I thank you, Mr. David, for your music direction, as well as the orchestra musicians, so crisp, and so full of life. <laughs> that make us feel transported in time and space. Mr. Mark Norris, thank you as well for the genius choreography with dances of all kinds of styles. That mesmerize us every second. I also appreciate you, Director Chris Shelton, for bringing the story to life so vividly <laughs> and movingly as you did, with all your detailed attention. I'm also deeply grateful for the government's kind support and the media's glorious comments. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I am touched also as an audience member by the work that so many professional artists poured into making this production 
including all the greatly talented cast members, the guest stars, the all creative team and crew, such as the script writers, lighting technicians, costume and set designers, and the musicians. And I know you all have worked long hours together to make it the best. I am always grateful for the artists. What the artists do for our world, we cannot thank them enough. Without the artists, I mean all the artists, you know, composers, musicians, artists, actresses, actors, singers, dancers, <laughs> all these great and elegant people, kind-hearted, so pure and so loving. These artists, they are doing wonderful things for our world as they do for our innermost heart. So I want to applaud you, each of you, one by one, for the wholehearted effort and the love you have put into this gift you have shared with us, the world, in the form of this musical. I truly appreciate the honor that all of you, the brilliant artists, the great musicians, exceptional actors, actresses, singers, the legendary composer, etc. All your effort. May God bless you. Do I have still a little time or my time is up? <laughs> it's okay? Should I continue? It's your show. Yes. Okay. So I just share with you a little bit <laughs> of my thought. Over two decades ago, Le Yin, one of the Olasis, meaning Vietnamese famous composer, translated one of my poems into musical song. At that time, I was not in the Himalaya yet. I am still a householder, you know. Uh, the poem called Like the Drifting Cloud. And one decade later, I knew about it. <laughs> I mean, all that time I did not know he put my poem into music. Uh, many people knew it, I didn't know. And then another famed musician glorified another of my poem titled Passing by Your House into a musical song. Also, I did not know it until half a decade later. Since then, many more such lovely surprises kept coming. When uh, they asked me if they could use the, you know, the latest poem, uh, The Real Love, to make it into a song, I thought, okay, another song. But I did not imagine that in such a proportion like this. I was so overwhelmed even just to know about this program. All oh, these great people, I could not imagine. And all the lucky people in the audience there, face to face with these exceptional great artists, talents, musicians, composers, I can only envy you. You know, this is kind of one of a lifetime that we can see all these great people together in one cast, in one musical. I can only envy you. But thank you for coming. Thank you. I can never thank all of you enough for your incredible loving dedication and support to art and love. This is the real love, your love. Love is the most precious thing in this physical realm, so we must protect love, be it the love between a couple, between parents and children, between friends, love between humans or love between animals, love between humans and animals or between animals and humans be it even the love between plants and trees. They do communicate, they do love and protect each other, as scientists has proven. You read about them, you know. Real love is what we need to protect our world, especially now. Whatever we love will blossom. Whatever loves us 
make us grow in happiness. But love is not just a vocabulary. Love is action, invisible and visible. Love can be flourished or destroyed, even though the essence of love can never be destroyed. There are deeds that can nourish love. There are deeds that can make love wither and die. I mean, physical love. I mean, the love in this realm. There are deeds that can make love grow. There are deeds that can make love diminish. We must cherish, treasure love if we find it, support it. We have to support it with our thought, our speech, and action. In any relationship, there must be always give and take. For example, between couple, it is not enough just to say "I love you." We should always take care to respect and help each other, like the first days, and even better every day. Knowing what the partner likes, we we'll try to offer that, and knowing what the partner doesn't like, we we'll try to avoid. Being considerate is the key to good relationship. Ah, listen to me, the one who left home. <laughs> But I know it works for you who want to keep your relationship. I'm just uh, indulging myself to voice a few opinions. Any differences we should discuss till both agree or compromise. It's not really difficult to keep a relationship happy and thriving. If we have real love, selfishness and ego are the number one love killer. And my Lord, don't we see a few of that? And then, when love is gone, we cry, we lament, we blame everything, everyone, including ourselves, and we could even punish ourselves with illness or even our life. But when we love on a bigger scale, for example, like our nation. Or our planet, or our world, then it's another story. That is the love like that of Jesus, of Buddha. Then we sacrifice personal happiness and personal love for others, be it humans or other species. Are you still there? So quiet. I thought I had put you to sleep. <laughs> Thank you for being awakened. Uh, it's about uh, you know three o'clock here in the morning. <laughs> I feel sleepy, so I thought maybe you are. Uh, be patient. I won't be long. <laughs> We can be and should be the example of love, like giving, caring, and harmonizing, so that when others think of us. Remember our names. They would feel happiness, love, comfort, and even noble, and their good quality will shine forth. We should not be the source of burden or misery to others in their thoughts, deeds, and speech. We have to be the source of inspiration, of nobility, and love, especially if we have been shown how by others' example. If we have love, all good will come our way. We can start to love now, today, and continue tomorrow into the future. Love yourself, love your family, love your neighbors, love all around us. Without love in our heart, we are almost nothing. Just a burden to ourselves, to loved ones, and society. Love is not a word on our lips. Love must be our feeling inside, an action translated outside. Love the animals, we be veg. Love the earth, we go green. Love the world, save the planet. I hope God will take into consideration <laughs> our sincere prayers.、Hmm? Then we can save the planet, but we should all be sincere and work together in unison, in one goal. Let me tell you why we should be veg. Not because we want to save the planet only, but it is the ingredients. 
the main quality, the main power to save this world in this critical situation. You see, eating animal flesh, meaning we are decreasing our love in our being from our structure, holy structure. We are born from God. We were holy. We were true human. We were true children of God. But if we eat the animals, then the mixing of blood type and genetic code between human and animals make us lose our status as the crowd of creation, as true humans. As pure humans, the children of God, we are under direct connection with the light, with the mighty master power of the commanding center of the universe. We have absolute command over all under heaven because we were pure and were children of God. But as we keep putting different elements into our beings, even physically, it will affect our spiritual structure as well. Because we became misling, mixing, a mixing structure, not pure. We became hybrid, vulnerable to attack from the dark force because we are not pure anymore. Thus, this kind of mixling creature could be annihilated because this mixling creatures send very confusing energy, confusing message into the center of the universe. So it could be annihilated because it's not recognized as pure human. So we could be eliminated out of physical realm to be recycled, to be screened out for pureness again and to be reused. But this process can be very painful and torturous over long periods, could be hundreds of thousands of earth years. Please help me to stop this. We don't want to be annihilated. We don't want to be screened out. I would like very much to be romantic, but I'm sorry, I just came out of many hundreds of hours of meditation. <laughs> okay, you be romantic for me. I become the ascetic so that you can be romantic at home. Just as even the best doctor even need the patient's consent to save them. We need your help, okay? I need the demonstration of love. Just 1% more love for the world, love for your children, love for all species, enough so that we will sacrifice our taste for the animals, meat, and related unmerciful products. We have to show love in a grander scale, not just a romantic love for our family members. We should keep that because every kind of love is sacred. Every kind of love we emit some beautiful, positive energy to protect us and to protect loved ones and something around us. So if each one of us give more love into the surrounding, uh, extend it like more, a little bit further than family, and enough of that love, that will make up for the 100% love power needed to dissolve the greatest threat to our survival. I already saved 99%, but the 1% is absolutely important. It's from you, your 1%. Please give more love, so that as long as I am still here, the sun will not flare, the universe destructive force will stop. Then we have time for plan B and plenty, plenty of more romantic. I might go back to my husband again, be romantic again, if he's still available. <laughs> 
I trust you, the romantic, beautiful Earth people, to understand this and make effort to save our world because you know already from all the media and scientists' report that we need more time on this planet to be romantic, okay? Have big love, big, 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 the bigger the better. Love all that you see around you. I normally wouldn't disclose this. I would not even talk about this, especially on such occasion like today. But the time is urgent. We have nothing to lose. Just replace that piece of animal's dead carcass instead with tasty, healthy, plant-made protein of all types. Be vegan, make peace. That's all we have to do. And love, okay? <laughs> Love as much as you want. Just don't make war. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless us all. Thank you so much for your gracious words, Supreme Master. Having you here today means a great deal. Thank you. As we know, the story of the heroine Tan was inspired by the real-life story of Supreme Master Ching Hai, and Supreme Master Ching Hai's dream of bringing happiness to the multitude did come true, in that her charitable works have touched countless lives around the world. And today, on the occasion of Supreme Master Television's fifth anniversary, Supreme Master Ching Hai has wished to present some gifts to six charities with humanitarian or environmental causes. Right. This gesture brings a special meaning to everyone's supportive presence this afternoon. That you will do. Now, here's the fun part. It's going to involve our group of special guests in the audience. What's going to happen is a drawing. Our helpers will go around with their baskets, and we ask our special guests to please pick an envelope from the basket. Uh. Most of the envelopes are blank. The winning envelopes have the word charity written on them. This lucky winners will be invited to come up to the stage and present the donation checks to the six charities. While wow. they're drawing their envelopes, we will introduce the six wonderful groups. Will the representatives please come up when your organization is introduced? First, we have Child Help, a leading nonprofit that directly helps victims of child abuse and families. Representing Child Help are the founders, Sarah O'Mara and Yvonne Federson. And next, we have the Earth Save Foundation, whose Meals for Health program empowers underprivileged communities to drastically improve the quality of life by changing to a plant based diet. Representing is Jeff Nelson, CEO and board chair of the Earth Save Foundation. Joining him is Earth Saves vegan founder John Robbins, author of the international bestseller Diet for a New America. We also have Greenpeace, the world's largest environment protection group of its kind, famous for its campaigns on climate change and saving our oceans and forests. Representing Greenpeace is the program development officer, Mark Smith. Next, for decades, United Way of Greater Los Angeles has been creating pathways out of poverty by providing affordable housing and health care for the homeless and helping people graduate from school and get job training. Representing United Way of Greater Los Angeles are Director of Workplace Operations, Sandra Coe, and Director of Workplace Development, Laura Pope. Ms. Coe and Ms. Pope will also be representing our next charity, United Way Worldwide. By supporting a network of 1,800 community-based United Way groups, they work hard so that someday everyone can enjoy healthy, well-educated, and financially stable lives. And last but not least, the Environmental Media Association, or EMA, has been mobilizing the entertainment industry to raise environmental awareness for millions of people. Representing them is our very own co-host, Ed Bagley Jr. Ed is on the EMA Board of Directors. Give a round of applause to the six dedicated eco and humanitarian organizations. And now I'd like to ask the chairman of the Supreme Master Ching Hai International Association to come forward with the donation checks from Supreme Master Ching Hai. And now back to our drawing. Do all of our celebrities and special guests have an envelope in hand? Are you ready? May I ask the orchestra for a drum roll, please? 
Okay, let's open on the count of three. One, two, three. Open your envelopes. If you got an envelope with the word charity on it, please hold it up and hold it up high. Don't be shy. Woo! Uh -huh. All right, I see we've got charity presenters. Come on up. Congratulations. Wow, somebody win Lotto today, huh? <laughs> and please tell our announcer your name as you make your way up the stage. Wow. Beautiful people and elegant people. May we have the CEO and board chair of EarthSafe Foundation, Jeff Nelson, to please step forward. On behalf of Supreme Master Ching Hai, the Honorable Mayor Howard Fishman will now present the first check. I'd like to present this check to EarthSafe International. Congratulations, keep up the fine work. Hi, thank you very much. I want to uh, thank Supreme Master Ching Hai for her support, her generosity to our organization, to EarthSave. I, we are very fortunate, EarthSave ourselves, to have the founder of our organization just fly in about 15 minutes ago to uh, also give his thanks. This is John Robbins. John flew in from Santa Cruz to, uh, to convey the thanks of EarthSave. John, why don't you say a few words? Well, thank you very much, Supreme Master Ching Hai, for this generous gift to our Meals for Health program. This is a program where EarthSave goes and works with food banks in inner cities, bringing plant-strong, plant-based diets into people whose health are, are very compromised and whose life situations are, and resources are very limited. And the results so far have been beyond miraculous. They've been absolutely flabbergasting. Uh, they've exceeded all of our expectations. And this gift will enable us to continue to grow this program and reach more and more people who need it. And I want to thank all of you who are here and all of you who are hearing me now for your commitment to living in a way that expresses your compassion, expresses your love in the way that you live, in the way that you eat, so that no animal has to suffer unnecessarily, that you may be fed, that you may thrive, that you may be well, that you may be purposeful, passionate, and fully alive in your spirits and helping us all to accomplish this love we are here to bring. Thank you. Our next presentation will be for Greenpeace. I'd like to ask Mark Smith, Program Development Officer for Greenpeace, to please step forward. Actor Dominic Pace is presenting the second check. Uh, Dominic Pace, uh, presenting a Greenpeace Fund for $35,000. Uh, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much, Supreme Master Shanghai, for this very special contribution. Greenpeace campaigns globally for a clean energy future, a future without global warming pollution. Greenpeace campaigns to protect tropical rainforests around the world. Greenpeace campaigns for marine reserves to protect the diversity of ocean life and its contributions like this that are a boost to our efforts. Thank you so much. Thank you. So may we ask the founders of Child Help to please step forward. Yay. Child Help began 52 years ago. Yvonne and I founded it, and we dedicated it to God from day one. And we began in Japan, building orphanage for the Amerasian children. And then we went to Vietnam, built orphanages there, and organized the Vietnam Baby Lift, wow. and brought thousands of children to this country for adoption. And now we're the largest nonprofit organization in America dealing with the prevention and treatment of child abuse. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And here's one of our special guest presenters. From LA Music Week, Representative Rick Mason is here to present the third check. I'd like to present this to you. Thank you. It's wonderful. It is the real love. Thank you. This has been a wonderful afternoon of love and light. 
And we're very familiar with that because we've always dedicated our organization to God and we've always worked with the love and the light to heal the abused and neglected children who are in our care. It's a great epidemic, unfortunately, in our country, and we all need to get behind the movement of helping these precious little souls and turn their lives around and help them to become the beautiful human being that God intended them to be. Thank you so much for this check today and for the love given with it. God bless you. God bless you. Next, we'll have the presentations for United Way of Greater Los Angeles and United Way Worldwide. Please step forward, directors Sandra Coe and Laura Pope. Here to present the fourth check is two-time Oscar nominee, Carol Connors. First of all, my name is Carol Connors. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, being that I, I have written with David Shire, the great David Shire, and Bill Conti um, on two of my Oscar nominations, I just want to say that this was one of the most beautiful, inspiring moments. And uh, it is inspiring for me to give you both this check. And I'm so proud of what you do. On behalf of United Way of Greater Los Angeles, I would like to say thank you to Supreme Master Ching Hai for all that she has done for her humanitarian efforts across the world and in Los Angeles. We really appreciate it. At United Way, we are creating pathways out of poverty every day. We're the voice for those who don't have a voice. So I want to say thank you on behalf of the 1.5 million people in Los Angeles County that live in poverty I want to thank you for the 52,000 homeless that are on our streets every night and for the hundreds of thousands of children that are struggling to graduate from high school. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Connors will also be presenting the fifth <laughs> check. Thank you, Mr. Ching Hai, for this generous gift. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. I'm really grateful for this generous gift. Thank you. Thank you. And our final charity is the Environmental Media Association, or EMA, and our co-host, who is rushing up here to get this check, is Ed Begley, Jr. from EMA's Board of Directors, and he'll be accepting the donation on the group's behalf from our special guest presenter. I'll be mercifully brief, since you've heard from me a lot. Um, I just want to say that Emma, the Environmental Media Association is a liaison between the environmental community and the entertainment community. They get a lot of green messages into TV shows and movies and lots of other things, and they've greened up a lot of sets and production offices. They've done wonderful work, so check out Emma, the Environmental Media Association. I want to thank you so much, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Theater actor Greg Polson will now be presenting the sixth and final check. All right, let's give our six charities and special guest presenters a round of applause, please. Supreme Master Ching Hai, you've just donated a total of $210,000 for multiple noble causes. That was so inspiring to watch. Would you like to share some remarks at this time? Thank you, thank you. First of all, congratulate the lotto winners. It's your lucky day today. <laughs> lucky day. <laughs> yes, thank you for helping me to present uh, some little humble token of gratitude and uh, admiration to these uh, great uh, groups who are working selflessly day and night to help make a better world. Uh, thank you, Earth Save, Greenpeace, Child Help, United Way of Greater Los Angeles, United Way Worldwide, and Environmental Media Association. May God bless your effort and uh, help you to continue with the strength that you are dedicating to the less fortunate of our world. 
Thank you for being in the front line. Thank you so much. Please continue with God love. Thank you, Supreme Master Ching I. We are thankful for what you do, not just today, but every day for people and the planet. Yes, uh, everybody is so appreciative, Supreme Master. Uh, will you be watching the rest of uh, the show with us? I'd be honored to. <laughs> I'd be honored to. This is a very rare occasion. I love it so much that I will sacrifice my meditation hours to sit here and watch this. It's beautiful. Thank you, Supreme Master Ching Ai. Here they are, our other beautiful MCs. Beautiful, beautiful. In case you haven't noticed, we all share something in common, which is that we're all vegan. Wow, bless you, bless And we you. all love Don McLean, who is setting up backstage right now. So you will have to endure us for just a few moments while the band sets up. Uh, does anybody want to share a story of the best vegetarian meal they ever had or <laughs> how they ended up becoming vegetarian or why they love animals? Well, one, one of the things one of my friends said to me the other day who's vegan that I thought was, made, he made such a great point. He said, have you ever met an unhappy vegan? And I thought, no, I haven't. You know, it's, we're putting such love out into the world, into the environment that we're just really showing, showing our happiness and our love. I've never met an unhappy vegan, have you guys? No, that's true, right, you're right. There's, they just have a, a wonderful energy to them. Yes. Yeah. I became vegetarian many, many years ago, but then really started getting active in the animal movement. I personally have an animal organization that does large-scale rescues. An unbelievable, thank you. Kristen works uh, with us. And um, for me, it was about watching an undercover fur video. And when I saw it, what I saw was happening because I loved animals my entire life. And yet I found, found myself very surprised that I didn't have any idea what was really happening to them. And I had no idea what was really happening to animals. They just existed and I thought they were wonderful and life was grand. But when I saw this on the screen, I was so taken aback. It was as if somebody had kicked me in the stomach and I doubled over and I just started sobbing uncontrollably. But it was that moment, that very poignant moment that I said, my life is changed forever. And from that moment forward, my diets changed. I bought a new car to get rid of my leather interior. I threw out all the leather out of my closet. I went through all of my cabinets and found every single product that had been tested on animals and I threw that out and on wow. and on and on. And so now my life is so enriched and so incredible because of this relationship that I have with animals now. And it's extended itself into Ed, into the whole green world, not just with animals, but in, in the with the environment. Beautiful, beautiful. Anybody else want to hear Don McLean and the Don McLean band? We all like. <laughs> and they need a few minutes, as most everyone here knows, to set up. And I am going to talk about being a vegetarian. I just want to say a little bit about Don. Don McLean discovered me years ago. He discovered me at, a, at a, the Troubadour back in 1972. I, before I got to St. Elsewhere, any of that, this wonderful man, this wonderful musician, who was a big star at that time, saw me play the Troubadour, and he thought I was amusing. And so he got me management, what have you, and I went on the road, and I opened for him and many other acts, thanks to Don McLean. Can we have a big thanks for Don McLean about that? I met him in 72, 1970. You asked about being a vegetarian. That's when I stopped eating red meat in 1970. I became a vegetarian in 1970, and I haven't had red meat since. I, thank you. I strayed for a while. I was one of those people who's eating fish for a while. I wised up on that. That doesn't work for me anymore and has not for years. I, I'm a pure vegan now, and I've been doing that for quite a while. Thank you. But I started this journey in 1970, and I'm 62 years old, and I rode up from Laurel and Ventura to Mulholland this morning, as I do every morning. So when they say uh, you don't have any strength if you're a vegetarian, that's not the way it is around my household. Uh, uh, <laughs> I feel very good. And as I said, I'm 62, and so it's a good diet. And I also became aware, not just what, how it might benefit me, uh, Kristen and others, but how it benefited the animals, the factory farms and these chickens and these hogs, the way they are, their whole life in one position for most of their life, they can't even move. It's not right, it really isn't right. 
Factory farms are bad. They're bad for the animals and they're bad for the environment. You go to a lot of rivers throughout the Midwest and you see what's happening there. They're really all these, uh, this incredible amount of nitrogen and these uh, pollutants and what have you and the, the kind of manure and the, what have you that comes from a farm. They try to contain it in these big ponds and pools. It doesn't work and it gets in the waterways. It gets in the groundwater. It's bad for the environment. Listen to Bobby Kennedy Jr.'s talk about that and he'll tell you in no uncertain terms how these big factory farms are despoiling the commons. It's very old law that you're not allowed to despoil the commons. That's what they're doing. They're polluting the water, the groundwater and the rivers and streams. But I've been doing this since 1970. That's when I started. It's uh, 42 years later and I feel pretty good. So I'll try to get through this without crying, but I'm already starting. So I think that, you know, um, what's important for me is to try to pull the thread and see where these things lead and really look for myself and have people decide for themselves. My mom bought laundry detergent, so I bought laundry detergent. And one day, when I'm pouring it in, I thought, that's neon blue. And where does it go? Well, and then you start asking questions and comparing, you know. And then I start looking at what, you know, factory farming does to our land, while well, also genetically modified crops are doing horrible things. So it's just an investigation for me, because I find that, you know, I love the story where someone went to Gandhi and said, hey, would you tell my kid to stop eating sugar? And he said, you come back in two weeks. So they came back to the same spot in two weeks, and Gandhi goes, stop eating sugar. And she's like, you know, I was here two weeks ago, dude. Like, you know, what was with all that? And he said, well, I was still eating sugar. <laughs> I was out traveling and I'd gotten some plastic thing and was throwing it in the trash. That's really not that different because that's putting oil back in earth. It's not my backyard, but it's somebody's. Our lives are so busy and I'm doing Twitter and Facebook and married and laundry and what have you. But to just my thing is to just kind of slow down and look at the actions of my day and try to see what I'm supporting. You know, where were my clothes made? Who made these? How do they live? To think of the other guy that we don't see. And that's, of course, the ultimate in veganism. I, I think what everybody is saying, and I, and I think what's, what's true for all of us, as, not just in this room, but as human beings, at some point you stop and try to figure out whether it's your relationship or some other part of your life, whether or not you're being really true to what you believe and what you want to stand for. Um, and we don't, we're all hypocrites. We're all imperfect. We all make compromises all the time. And we're all at some point along uh, a path. Some, some may feel like they're further and some may be further behind, but as long as you feel like you're moving in a direction of being more true to who you really feel like you are, I think you're getting there. Uh, for me, that happened. Um, uh, a seminal moment uh, in my life was uh, in the early 80s. Uh, my wife and I were at a uh, fairground in uh, Maryland. There was a little pen of pigs. And for some months, my fiance at that time had decided that she really wanted to try to be vegetarian. She did the typical thing, she eliminated, eliminated red meat. And, uh, and I had been resisting, uh, as typically as men do, and even though I knew in my heart that for us it, it was the right thing. And I saw these little pigs in this pen, and the little baby piglets looked like little puppies. And I was like, oh, God, you soak. I was bending down, and I put my hand up to the thing, and one came over and snuffled me. And my wife leaned down right next to me, and very softly said, he still eats you. And I swear this little pig turned and looked at me like, and for me, I realized I can't do, I can't do this anymore. Uh, and, and, and so on that day, I stopped that part of it. Now, before we wrap this up, I, there, I know there are a lot of animal people in this audience there. I know there are a lot of music fans. We've had a lot of celebrities here today. But I looked out in the audience a minute ago, and I saw somebody who is one of the real giants of this movement. Uh, I didn't know he was going to be here, but he's an old friend. And when I say giant, I mean giant. Alex, stand up, take a bow. Alex Pacheco. Wow. This is a guy that has uh, seen stuff and done stuff that, as much as we all love animals, 
we would not have the stomach to do. So he's, he's one of the, the heroes of, of all of this. So I thank you for, for uh, listening to my story, and I think they're just about ready, and I know it's going to be great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks for coming, Alex. Thank you, all of you, for being vegans, vegetarian. God bless you. Wow, my favorite, Don McLean. You've heard Don McLean in many uh, wonderful songs and albums, Tapestry, you've heard. You've heard American Pie and uh, Vincent, great songs. He's a great friend, a great musician, a great songwriter. Please welcome to the stage Don McLean and the Don McLean Band.
We'll do a little song called Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, all roads lead to you. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, your light is shining through. You will show, show. Jerusalem this time the walls will keep you in the walls will keep you out gates are calling though know what it's about in Jerusalem Jerusalem all roads to you, Jerusalem, my Jerusalem, your light is shining through. Jerusalem, this time, Jerusalem is old, Jerusalem is new, Jerusalem can hold Muslim, Christian, Jew in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, all roads to you Jerusalem my Jerusalem your light is shining through This time. The markets and the alley the temples and the tombs a place for all believers it has so many rooms in Jerusalem Jerusalem all roads lead to you Jerusalem my Jerusalem your light is shining through This time, yeah, we can live in peace in Jerusalem. This time, thank you. Beautiful song. Thank you. Um, this is a song I was lucky enough to have a, 
uh, a hit record with, and I love this song so much. It's a song written by Roy Orbison and Joe Melson, and uh, I recorded it in 1978, and uh, it didn't go anywhere, and then it went all around the world as a, a number one record, and uh, it's a hard song to sing, but once I had a hit with it, I realized, yeah, I'm going to have to sing this every night now. <laughs> So I learned how to sing it, and uh, so this is for Roy Orbison, it goes like this. I was all right for a while I could smile for a while But when I saw you last night You held my hand so tight when you stop to say hello Though you wished me well You couldn't tell That I'd been crying Over you crying Over said so long left me standing all alone alone and crying 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 it's hard to want Stand at the touch of your hand can start me crying. I thought that I was over you, but it's true. But darling, what can I do? Oh, you don't love me And I'll always be Begley from probably more than 40 years and Ed you know is is serious about his environmental work and he's also a terrific comic actor and uh, knowing Ed I was playing a uh, a club called the Troubadour which was out here and it was a, a tough 
club and a lot of tough audiences. And I played there for a few years. And uh, Lori Lieberman, who's here tonight in the audience, she uh, heard me sing a song called Empty Chairs. And she wrote a poem which became the song Killing Me Softly with his song. Wow. She had the first recording of that song. And uh, Roberta Flack heard it and, uh, and made a big hit out of it. So I'm going to do Empty Chairs. I feel the trembling tingle of a sleepless night Creep through my fingers and the moon is bright Beams of blue come flickering through my window pane Like gypsy moths that dance around a candle flame I wonder if you know that I never understood that although you said you'd go until you did I never thought you used to bathe the contours of your face while chestnut hair fell all around the pillowcase and the fragrance of your flowers rest beneath my head a sympathy bouquet left with a love that's dead I wonder if you know That I never understood That although you said you'd go until you did I never thought you would Never thought the words you said were true Never thought you said just what you meant Never knew how much I needed you Never thought you'd leave Until you Morning comes and morning goes with no regret The evening brings the memories I can't forget Empty rooms that echo as I climb the stairs and Empty clothes that drape and fall on empty chairs And I wonder if you know That I never understood That although you said you'd go until you did I never thought you Tough one. It's all happening now. Long, long time ago, 
I can still remember how that music used to make me smile. And I knew if I had my chance that I could make those people dance, maybe they'd be happy for a while. But February made me shiver with every paper I deliver bad news on the doorstep. I couldn't take one more step. I can't remember if I cried when I read about his widowed bride, but something touched me deep inside the day the music died. So sing it with me. So bye bye, Miss American Pie. Oh, my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. Them good old boys are drinking whiskey and rye. Singing this will be the day that I die. This will be the day that I die.
the man there said the music wouldn't play in the streets the children scream lovers cried in the poets dream but not a word was spoken the church bells all were broken and the three men I admire most Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost They cut the last train for the coast The day the music died And they were singing Bye, bye, Miss American High Oh, my Chevy to the levee But the levee was dry and rye singing this will be the day that I die this will be the day that I die oh yeah oh yeah I'll be the singing I have a man
with a pink carnation and a pickup truck. But I knew I was out of luck the day the music died. But the levee was done. Good old boy drinking whiskey and rye, saying this will be the day that I die. Now slow it down, boy. Oh, we were singing by Miss American High. songs I ever wrote and when I was getting out of school and thinking about being a singer and leaving everything behind which you kind of have to do it's called castles in the air it goes like that If she asks you why, you can tell her that I told you that I'm tired. Castles in the air, I've got a dream. I want the world to share. Castle walls just lead me to despair. Hills of forest green, where the mountains touch the sky, a dream come true. I'll live there till I die I'm asking you to say my last goodbye Love we knew ain't worth another try Save me from all the trouble and the pain I know I'm weak But I can't face that girl again Tell her the reasons why I can't remain And perhaps she'll understand If you tell it to her plan How can words express The feel of sunlight in the morning in the hills Away from city strife I need a country woman for my wife City born, but I love the country life. For I will not be part of her cocktail generation. Partners waltz, devoid of all romance. Music plays and everyone must dance. Bowing out, I need a second chance. Save me from all the trouble and the pain I know I'm weak But I can't face that girl again Tell her the reasons why I can't remain Perhaps she'll understand If you tell it to her plain And if she asks you why, you can tell her that I told you that I'm tired of castles in the air. I've got a dream. I want the world to share. Castle walls just lead me to despair.
introduce everybody on stage here on the piano is Tony Migliore. <laughs> on the drums, Jerry Croon. On the guitar, Vip Vipperman. On the bass, David Smith. Master Ching Hai loves this song, so I'm doing this for her. Well, thank you, thank you. Starry, starry night. Paint your palette blue and gray. Look out on a summer's day With eyes that know the darkness in my soul Shadows on the hills Sketch the trees and the daffodils Catch the breeze and the winter chills In colors on the snowy linen land Now I understand What you tried to say to me How you suffered for your sanity How you tried to set them free They would not listen, they did not know how Perhaps they'll listen now Starry, starry night Flaming flowers that brightly blaze Swirling clouds in violet haze Reflect in Vincent's eyes of china blue Colors changing hue Morning fields of amber gray Weathered faces lined in pain Are soothed beneath the artist's loving hand Now I understand What you tried to say to How you suffered for your sanity How you tried to set them free They would not listen, they did not know how Perhaps they'll listen now For they could not love you Still your love was true And when no hope was left inside On that starry, starry night You took your life as lovers often do But I could have told you, Vincent This world was never meant for one as beautiful as, as you Starry, starry night Portraits hung in empty hall Frameless heads on nameless walls with eyes that watch the world and can't forget Like the strangers that you've met The ragged men in ragged clothes A silver thorn, a bloody rose Lying crushed and broken on the virgin snow now I think I know
what she tried to say to me how you suffered for your sin how you tried to set them free they would not listen they're not listening still perhaps they never Mr. McLean, I like all your songs, not just Vincent. I love all your songs. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. You are great. My favorite.
Thank you so much, Don McLean and Ben. He had a beautiful voice back then in the early 70s, and his voice is even better today. It's incredible. And the songs are timeless. You know, it's just to hear them on the radio is one thing, to hear them live in person is just fantastic. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Yeah. Lucky people. And it was great to see that you guys were joining along too. <laughs> it's yes. amazing. It's been fantastic the whole afternoon with the musical and the concert. Everything's been great. And especially to meet Supreme Master Ching Hai. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you for your generosity with Emma, the Environmental Media Association. Thank you so much. Thank you for all of your hard work. Thank you. God bless America. <laughs> She's making the world a kinder place. She really is. And she's inspired the global media channel, Supreme Master Television, to send out messages of peace over the airwaves for the past five years. So now a celebration of Supreme Master Television's fifth anniversary is coming to a close. There's a beautiful vegan dinner banquet waiting for you. <laughs> Complimentary for everyone to enjoy. Vegan banquet. And Supreme Master Ching Hai. We wanted to say goodbye to you live. I just want to wish you bon appetit and uh, you're lucky people. I don't remember when was my ever last good meal like that. So please enjoy double for me. <laughs> and have a nice, nice, nice life from today and every day. Thank you so much for all the gifts. Thank and you. The applause and everything. Enjoy. Thank you. God bless. God bless you all. And God bless America. God bless the world. used to make me smile And now from the show, one of the MCs, we have actress Elaine Hendricks. This was an extremely elaborate event. Um, it wasn't just a musical. It was an, a, a musical and a presentation and a concert and a coming together of you know like-minded people for a very um, noble purpose. You know to share love and compassion. So I, I'm impressed. I, I think it's something very special and very unique that a network can come out and show the positive, and it's proving successful. So I think that's a pretty incredible thing. Michael Lederer. I just finished uh, Snow White in Montreal with Julia Roberts playing the bad guy, the Baron. And uh, I was nominated years ago for the Oscar for Barton Fink. And uh, I was very happy to be invited to this event. Unfortunately, my son, who is the vegan, is off to Burning Man right now. My other son is here, and he likes the mock sushi. Supermaster Ching Hai is a remarkable lady. I mean, she's very holy, but um, not in any formal religious way. I was very impressed by that. But I thought all the performances were amazing. Is there a song that you liked in particular? Real Love. But I liked a lot of her poetry as singing. It reminded me of Bob Dylan. I liked that. It was real, it was committed, it wasn't phony, and I felt uh, the instincts of the actors and of her personal journey was true. Well, I thought uh, Master Ching Hai's speech was wonderful and very illustrative of the musical. Her passion for love. We enjoyed every part of it, you know, the, the celebrity part of it, and the charity part of it, and the, the musical itself, and her story, and the, the concert, everything worked together. I was crying because the words touched me so much. Everything she said today is exactly what's happening in our world, this tremendous lack of love and 
I liked w what she said, that all we have to do is open our hearts and just show people we love. Doctor, doctor, doctor. As an expert in, in our, the human effects on climate, I just want to share with her that, that I really appreciate her leadership in trying to bring that message to the world. The science is, is all too real, and to have someone like her that is trying to, to give the right message to people, I think is really, really outstanding. This whole thing was just put together so beautifully. Don McLean, that music, that he was singing was poetry, too. I mean, Starry Starry Night, I can see why that's one of her favorite songs. It's just gorgeous. It was it's so incredible and was, you know, a heartwarming, really lovely, sweet story that I can't imagine anyone not loving. The doctor with the mustache, and he was hilarious. So I love that character. It was such a gift that you do have that feeling after a night like this that you want to do something good. And that's why all the charities that were involved here, it snowballs. I got a sense of charity, of giving, of, of thinking uh, more than just about yourself, to think about the whole picture of humanity. This was the most delicious vegetarian buffet dinner, I have to confess. I am not a vegetarian. This is a very uh, thought-provoking event for me, you know. When she was speaking about um, us turning into hybrid creatures by putting animals into us and that we're not really human when we do that, I'd never heard it expressed that way. And that really stuck with me. the celebrity MCs, Kristen Bauer from True Blood. It was great. Yeah, really, really well done. It's a, a huge production. The group of people, I, Ed and I were reading off the list. It was unbelievable. It was Emmy and Oscar and Tony and just in really accomplished people. I can't stress enough to see someone like Don McLean, who is a legend and such a master still doing what he does and his voice was as beautiful and as crystal clear as ever his music always makes me cry it's so beautiful now i understand what you tried to say to me and how you suffered for your sanity how you tried to set them free. Today was very, uh, very heart pressing. It really took me to another level with uh, Don and his music. I never knew his music was like spiritual. When he sang the song Jerusalem and the other music, it really touched my heart today. Jerusalem, my Jerusalem, your light is shining through. He's just so amazing. I know people are really excited to see him, so it's, it's really cool that he's a part of this. What message did you leave the musical with today? That love is really the most important thing in the world and the wars and, and the horrible atrocities that are happening in the world. Things that people don't even view as atrocities. Such as eating animals, we wouldn't be having the horrible natural disasters that we were having if we were showing the Mother Earth our love. So it was very inspiring and it was really like a once-in-a-lifetime uh, kind of presentation. Very beautiful harmonies, very sophisticated choreography. I loved it. I loved it. It was uh, very touching. I had tears coming down a few times just to see the uh, poignancy of the uh, love that she shared with not only uh, the man who was her husband, but for the Vietnamese people and uh, for the animals, for the whole human family. She's really emphasizing that the Supreme Master is what we all have dwelling within us. There's going to be a huge ripple effect from this.
her tenets were universal. That's what I like, I'm a Christian, but it's the same love and peace and joy all over the world and changing hearts. She certainly is a force for good. She's connected with the spiritual realm, so she knows exactly what's going on. It's a very critical point right now on the planet, and, and so we all need to wake up. Like she said, the planet may be annihilated, so I don't want that, nobody wants that. I love also the Supreme Master talks so much about world peace and how, you know, the, the futility and the deep, deep sorrow of war. I was so impressed that Supreme Master woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and was so alert and awake and funny and sincere and real. And that she said, yes, I'll stay up for the Don McLean concert. And I was thinking, it's going to be 5 a.m. Don't you ever sleep? I keep working with the Supreme Master and her organization. And for some reason, there's always some miracle. On Broadway, it'll take a week or two weeks to add lights and sound and backdrops coming in. And So we had two days. Halfway through the second day, hadn't even looked at the end of the first act or the second act. So we all gathered together and we said, I don't know how we're ever going to do this. But when we started playing with the orchestra, the cast kept going. They just kept doing the show. And in real time, in an hour and 12 minutes, the entire rest of the show got teched. In real time. It's not only never happened before, but it is impossible for it to happen. I consider that a miracle. phenomenon. Many songs I like, but what remains is the song where she was most frustrated. My favorite, P.S. Until Tomorrow. So she quit, but not really. I've always been uh, an environmentalist. I like that it's now spread out into the media, into this Broadway show, because through music, uh, you deliver the, deliver the message much more eloquently and I think more universally. I told my friend that I might become a vegetarian after this. <laughs> I'm vegan for five years now. No more illness, no more flu, runny nose, fever, cold, sore throat, gone, everything. It's amazing, me, my wife, and my four kids. Her message was really strong. and She just got more into the spiritual, what we need to hear, especially in this world today. You can feel the energy running through the, through the palace over there. <laughs> I call it the palace. It was, it was a wonderful feeling, and I'm gonna go home energized tonight. I spent years working at Radio City, which is a pretty big venue for shows, 6,000 people at seats. But I have never experienced anything of the size of the real love with such a short amount of time, because at Radio City, our shows were started planning at least a year and a half to two years in advance, and then we had at least six weeks of solid rehearsal. This was speeded up reality, and it worked. I felt something very unusual about being around the rehearsal of the real love, and that was a certain sort of serenity. Everybody seemed to feel this will be all right, and indeed it was. I had no idea what the other composers were doing, but it all seemed to hold together. It was like, that's the way it was supposed to be. And that's what I mean by that silent kind of calmness. You had somebody looking over you on this, more than just the composer. Oh, I certainly think the highlight is, uh, is hearing an enlightened master speak and seeing her live on the video feed and um, observing someone who is an enlightened master who's in a full meditative state while speaking in the material world. Incredible. Loved hearing uh, the master speak afterwards. And I can tell you this is the first time I've ever seen uh, a living human being in a meditative state while speaking coherently. Fascinating. I think uh, with someone like that who's a true enlightened master, it's not what she says, it's her presence. <laughs> the beginning, I was kind of like, why is she not here to experience the story of her life? But when I found out that she was actually not here because she was helping the world, I thought that was quite amazing and, and that was very powerful to me. And 
She just finished a hundred hour meditation. I mean, that's, that's incredible. I was like, wow. I was so relieved when she continued on. Remember when she said, uh, is my time up? If we hadn't heard the rest of what she said, I mean, that's where really the gold came. She was being gracious and very thankful for this beautiful musical, but then it was just wonderful to hear her talk. you for enlightening us all today. You've affected my life and I thank you for that. Not only did I love the way she said things, but I love the sound of her voice. She is so comforting. She has the thing I'm saying I sensed about the theater, this tranquility, this ease. But she was so gracious to every department of the show. I was just, I loved hearing her, her talk. You really felt like you were in a living room visiting with her. I was really shocked how much younger she looked. And it wasn't the lighting or anything, it was her face. She generates within herself this wonderful, and it was like three in the morning wherever she was. And she looked lovely and her voice sounded so rested. It seems that meditation does accomplish a great deal. If I were in her presence, I certainly would express to her my great appreciation for her caring about performers and the importance of recognizing what we do. And bless Supreme Master Jing Hai for having that attitude toward artists. We need it. It helps us be better. In Santa Clarita, we really believe in cultivating the arts. Yeah, I'm Marcia McLean, Mayor of the City of Santa Clarita, and I want to Congratulate. This event today is just wonderful. Did you get a chance to go to the exhibition and see her artwork? Oh, it's so inspiring and it's playful and it's youthful and it seems to be ephemeral and eternal at the same time. It's great to see such a positive message presented to such a large audience. Her message of compassion for all and, and love is something that we really need to accept and embrace. We're really in a critical time in this, this world with the environmental degradation, the way that we're treating each other and animals, and we really need to choose kindness over cruelty. We need to choose sustainability over pollution, and the message of the Supreme Master Television is something that is going to really help save this planet. The banquet is incredible. There are so many fantastic vegan foods here, everything from vegan chicken products to sushi. Uh, it goes to show that we can enjoy fantastic food without harming animals or the environment or our health. It's, it's incredible. The idea would be, if we didn't eat animals, what a lovely place it'd be. I mean, also for the planet, you know, we wouldn't be ruining our water systems, we wouldn't be ruining our soil, and it'd be nice if animals didn't have to suffer for our pleasure. When people say, oh, you know, but we were, you know, born to eat meat, that's not true. We have a conscience and we have a choice, and we can make a world a better place. I'd like to say Supreme Master that she's done a fabulous job. I'd love for her to come in person next time. Please, Supreme Master, we would really like your presence. You could definitely tell that there were um, award-winning uh, composers that were, <laughs> that were a part of this because, it, yeah, I mean, it just, it's, it just felt like uh, one of those great musicals. You know, it took me back to Miss Saigon and like it was a great you know, musical expression as well as the true inspired story from Supreme Master Ching Hai. I just felt like the whole thing was like as if I were on going to Broadway to watch it. And I was like, oh wait a minute, this whole thing is about her life. That's so incredible. And I, I mean, what an honor to have you know an entire musical written about you. I love 
people and especially women who can take leadership positions in the world and come from such a grounded and soft place. I admire that. Namaste. Just uh, thank you for everything that you're doing and it is a true honor to be here. She's definitely a revelator, um, someone who really reaches out to God and Buddha. And um, I think she's a very superior woman who has so much to give to the world. I enjoyed the musical and it actually brought me to tears a couple of times. I don't even know all the names of the songs, but my favorite was Right After the Young Girl Died, that song. I was very inspired by the musical and Supreme Master Ching Hai's uh, words as well. I truly believe in a vegan and vegetarian lifestyle for reducing greenhouse gas emissions and other uh, negative impacts on the planet. The feeling I got from her was just, she had a good sense of humor. I like that and I just appreciate so much anyone that talks about kindness and love and kindness to the other guy and the little guy and not assuming that we're more important than anybody else in another country uh, whether you're different species, that, that we're all one. We uh, had breakfast in Cancun, and she was lovely. Revered as a living deity, she is quite human and very charming. And uh, I just, it's, it's, she's nice to hang with, and I liked her. So seeing her on, on the film today, she was just delightful. How, how could she be anything else? She's a sweet, caring, she's the person we portrayed in the musical, and you know, so everybody should know that. month since I've been here, I have been 100% vegan. And you know what? I'm energetic. I have lost nothing by not eating meat products. It's actually pretty good. You know, no headaches, no anything, not an upset stomach. I got to play music by these incredible composers and Doug orchestrated such a beautiful piece. I got the play the wood flute and the flute and the saxophone and the clarinet and it was a thrill. I've read her book. I, I think she's a fascinating person and it really helped me understand a little bit more where she came from. So it was very real. Actually, I was underneath the stage, so I just peeked out once to see her. She looked beautiful. The event is amazing. Um, it's a 10 out of 10. I have uh, the Supreme Master TV app on my iPhone and my iPad. I love it. Supreme Master TV, congratulations. I think there should be more TV stations like you. Real love is, is peace and tranquility, and uh, we hope for peace throughout the world. Hi, I'm Frank Stalling. I wish you a Happy five-year anniversary for Supreme Master TV. Hi, Michael Lerner. I am congratulating Supreme Master Television on their fifth anniversary. Supreme Master Television, happy fifth birthday. That's really wonderful to be touching so many people with such good news and sharing stories of love is wonderful. Hi, I'm Kristen Bauer and you're watching Supreme Master Television. Thank you. I hope you enjoy this message of love that they're offering. Be veg, go green to save the planet.